Okay, wait no notification. Okay, boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us today, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than our brother, Brother David Ali. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, sir. Yes, sir. This means a lot to myself, my family, and the view and audience of the People's Podcast that you would take time out of your busy schedule to come uh, have an amazing conversation with us today, sir. Uh, Thank you. People are showing you love in the comments already. Thank everybody who's watching. Here we go. Come on, my sister Miriam says, I'm making family. Well, they come ma'am. Okay, so now, now, Brother David, the first time we met, we were drilling. I was with the Atlanta brothers. We were drilling in the streets. You were with the Chicago FOY, the God Squad drill team at that time. Um, and I just, our energy just vibed. I was like, oh, this man is a strong soldier by the grace of Allah. What, what, what is it about you that always have you being an activist and uh, being a leader in the community? What is it about being in the streets that, that makes you be out, out front? Yes, sir. First, I would like to say, in the name of Almighty God, Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, in the name of his exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, in the Messiah, among us, the warner and the comforter among us, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. It is in their righteous and holy names that I greet you all in the Arabic words of peace. Salam alaikum. Um, salam, sir. To answer your question, uh, Brother Joshua, I, I have always had a love for my people ever since I was a young boy. I've always loved Black people and I've always hated the suffering of black people. I've always hated the enemy's foot on the black man and woman's neck. And I always knew that some way, somehow, Allah would use me, God would use me in some type of way in order to reach my people. Now, dear brother Joshua, I didn't quite know what. I didn't know what it would be, brother. I didn't, you know? I mean, I, I could recall as a, as a young man, um, at the age of like 10, nine, eight years old, going on the Ku Klux Klan websites and just reading everything that they had to say. I've always hated the enemy, dear brother. Mm, mm, mm. And Allah just put that in me. Uh, I remember when I was in middle school, I used to wear, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, black leather jackets and say black power down the hallway. And all the teachers would, all the Caucasian teachers would be frightened. But I, I didn't know that I, uh, Almighty God would use me in such a way for me to join unto my own, for me to accept my own and become myself, for me to obtain the knowledge of God given to us by Master Farad Muhammad, which was given to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and given to the warner among us, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. So to answer your question without being long-winded, it was just always in me and I always had a love for my people, dear brother. And I thank Allah that I'm able to serve them in whatever capacity I could serve them in righteousness. Beautiful. It was all, all praise due to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My sister Naima sends the greetings. And thanks to everyone who's showing love all across the country. And when we put this on YouTube, please let us know what city you all are watching to get from. Okay, yes, sir. Now, brother David, from someone who you're very open about your connections, affiliations with the Black Peace Stone Nation, um, the Bloods, members of your uh, former organizations and things like that. What makes you, how did they receive you now that you accept the teachings? Yeah. yeah. Well, for the most part, it has been well for those who have the knowledge of that which they have been given, which in truth is Islam those that do not have a proper knowledge of that which they have been given, they do not understand. Mm. And it's all right that they don't understand because they'll either face the chastisement of Allah or they'll come into the knowledge of that in their own due time. My assignment was to spread Islam and get the hell out the way. 
Mm, and mm. that's exactly what I've done with respect to my brothers. And uh, people could take it or they could let it alone. But anywhere you go, when you represent these teachings, especially Brother Joshua, you're faced by FBI agents. As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, you know, whenever there's one or two of you gathered, gather, so is the FBI. Mm, mm. And uh, one must stand strong and one must stand firm, but one not must be a fool. So you give the message and you get out the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, once you give the message, how important is it for you to help others? Because some people may shun their former life or shun things that they you know, used to do. How important is it for people to stay connected to where they once came from as far as coming back to give that message? I believe I that, you. I personally believe that it is essential. I follow the example of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and my father, the Honorable Minister, my spiritual father, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan doesn't have a spirit of rejecting where you come from but rather to go back and don't be self-righteous to go back and get those that the white man has deceived. And you do the best that you can. Again, they have a choice to accept it or reject it. If they reject it, they're going to face the chastisement of our law as it is coming down heavier and heavier. If they accept it, then you as the representative, speaking to myself, must strive to be the best example of that which comes out of your mouth and not be a hypocrite yourself. Because not only uh, uh, the former organized uh, street organizations that we may have been affiliated with or other things that we have been affiliated with, but just the people in general out here. As our father says, the people know when you faking or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They know when you being genuine or not. That's right. So the people want to know, dear brother Joshua, do you really love me? Moreover, you believe in what the hell that you represent. And when you stand firm on that, hey, man, those who have eyes, they can see, brother. It's not so hard for one who has eyes, brother. But hell, you know. A lot, brother, in truth, are going to have to face the chastisement of our law. Because sometimes, dear brother, a lot of times and all times, as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad predicted, he said, brother, it's going to take more than teaching to wake our people up. Okay. See, you and I, brother, we came by the word and all praises due to our law. But there's some, brother, that's not going to come by the word alone. They're going to have to come by the absolute fire. And this is why the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said in the Cliff Kelly show upon our dear brother Muammar al-Gaddafi being assassinated by these people. He said that the serpents are coming up. He called them the fiery serpents. He said, and the fiery serpents represent angry white people. And that's exactly what's coming down in the black community. The most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan Ben said this. He said this on, on justifiable homicide. And, and you remember, Brother Joshua, he armed us. The FOI, he let us out of the. You all can't say my father doesn't work and didn't work. He outworked the hell out of each and every one of you. He armed us, 300 of us FOI. He let us out in the community, armed us with justifiable homicide DVDs that he uh, uh, made a lecture of and going in great detail about how this enemy is gonna come in the black community and strive to kill us wholesale if we don't wake up. He gave that to us. Now you all got that from the father for free. So he didn't ask, ask you for any money. My father is not a, my spiritual father, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is not a man that is greedy or, or seeks money. He seeks your life. He wants your life so that you may submit to almighty God Allah. And, and let me clear this up, any money that has, ever come to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He ain't never seen it because he gave it right back. And I challenge any damn one of you to come against me on that. Beautiful. All praises to a lot of people showing you love all across the country. And my sister Naima says, teach. Um, my next question for you, sir, is we want to stay right here, then we're going to move to our next section. Um, being in Naperville, where I you know, grew up, there would be people uh, from the city who would be like Blackstones, and they would come and they saw my name being Muhammad, and saw me representing the teachings. And they'll be like, yo, bro, we read the Quran. 
You know what I'm yes. saying? It's, it's a connection. You know what I'm saying? All praises do so a lot. You know, they my point. I got the. They see me with my star crescent ring. They like, oh, I got the same type of ring. What yes. um, What can we do for people who maybe weren't in the in gangs or in street organizations, but want to reach back out to do a better? I suppose like for somebody who's not in the in the gang, never was in the street organization, but to have a connection to show them the connection with the Nation of Islam and organizations all across the country. What What's a What's a good a word? To connect us with whether you know what I'm saying somebody is to the left to the right red or blue flag what can you say yes yes well first I would like to say on that note brother Joshua that if you look at the example of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan beating being the chief angel that he is yes, and being a student of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad do we see and have we paid attention to how he goes into the churches Yes, sir. He can go in the synagogue if they allow him and teach and show the similarities. That's right. That's right. Of this book, Holy Quran, and bridge it all together. He can go on the church using Bible and Holy Quran and make them see deeper, even in their own scriptures. And this is why a lot of the preachers behind closed doors, all right enough. They tell the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you're, you're a prophet, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So getting to the organizations, if you look at how our father ties the, the Masons in with the teachings. Yes, sir. If you look at how these uh, frats or fraternities or whatever you call it, I'm not too versed in that, how they honor him as well, as you could bear me witness, brother yes, Josh. And yeah. how he ties it all into the teachings. Now, if we look at our brothers who are under the six point star. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Life, love, loyalty, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yes, sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan ties all of that in. And the most righteous among the brothers in the growth and development or those that are a part of the Crip organization, whatever sect of them, if they abide by the law in the highest form, then you are demonstrating brotherhood and you're demonstrating Islam, whether you know it or not, because you in of yourself are a savior to, to your community. I'm talking about the ones that really hold to the law. I'm not talking about the ones that the white man has duped. And I'm not talking about these agents that are sent in. I'm talking about the ones that hold true to the law. What about the five point star? Yes, sir. We have love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Similar to freedom, justice, and equality. Very similar, yes sir. They read the Holy Quran. They read the circle seven. Most of the brothers, they it's, it's most of them follow more science. Some of them are Sunni. Some of them are 5%. And some of them bear witness to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, but it all comes down to Islam. And my point in saying all of that is the father, brother, even in regards to the uh, rap industry, he never condemns them, brother, as you could bear me witness because you know more than many. He always tells them to go back and just clean up the lyrics, but raise the people up bit by bit. Yes, sir. You're powerful. He says, you're the new leaders but just change it up a bit and then raise them into the consciousness that you have come into. And I believe that's our job. So the point that I'm making without being long winded is the father always ties it into Islam and he never has a spirit of condemning, but he will warn dear brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because the fire is absolutely coming. So there is a time to where it is the fire is coming after the warning. And that's when the warner or warners have to sidestep and get out the way. Once you see ones don't follow the message that you're given, at least you be chastised right along with them. Again, you have to be wise when you move, but the truth stands in of itself, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All uh, praise to the Lord. Teaching, brother David. Uh, Sister Donita says, tell it. Yes, sir. And yes, ma'am. Thank you all for watching. Okay, my next question for you, sir, is um, seeing you on your on social media, 
you yes, post as a minister constantly. You post uh, clips where you were in the audience, where you weren't in the audience, but throw back to, to current day. What is it about your um, study of the lectures and the words of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad coming through the Most Honorable Sulis Farrakhan that connects with you and the effect that you see that having on people via social media? I'm sorry, last part of the question. Yes, sir. Via social media, like how, like how important is it? Have you been using your social media to affect the people? How, how has that become working out for you? Oh man, uh, I don't talk about it, but since you asked me, I'll explain a little bit. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, <laughs> boy, these teachings are, are not only uh, uh, boy life giving, but they're life saving. Yes, sir. Absolutely has saved my life, brother. Mm, mm. Upon a hey, listen, upon my submission, because I've been a brother in times past that hasn't always done what I was supposed to in regards to the knowledge that I've been given. And trust me when I tell you, when it says God chases, chases those who we love, he chastised the heck out of me, brother. I'll talk about Master Farah Muhammad <laughs> beat me into submission. Do you understand? And I'm still being perfected. I I'll always want to make that point known because I never want to come to the people or to appears if that if though I am not relatable. In some aspects, you might even be better than I am. So I'd never want anybody to think, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm F O I. I no, 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 no. Because that's not the spirit that our father comes in. He's not arrogant, he's not egotistical, but he is who he is, and he demonstrates that. And we're not going to dim our light for a damn soul. Let me say that. Now, in regards to uh, what Master Farad Muhammad has blessed me to share and to demonstrate of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, by Allah's permission, I have led many to be open to hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to whereas they were uh, disbelievers, they have now come to at least have an opening ear, uh, some by Master Farad Muhammad's permission, because it ain't Brother Dave. It, some by Master Farad Muhammad's permission have even joined the ranks of the Nation of Islam, both male and female. And so to that, man, we say all praises due to Allah. But for me personally, I feel as if though that is a blessing. And while that is a blessing, I recently had a talk with myself. I said, yes, brother. I said, yeah, that's good and all. I said, but you're not doing enough. I said, you need to get back out there in the streets and really put the work in harder than you ever have before. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't see it as me being hard on myself, brother Joshua, but I see it in being in line with what I'm supposed to be doing. And I could always do more because when I look at the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, Brother Joshua, I'm sure you remember. Do you remember when Brother Muammar Gaddafi came to the United Nations in New York back in 2009? Yes, sir. Brother, I think, well, how old was I? I don't know. Maybe I was 20 years old, 19 years old. Brother, Keeping up with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan on that detail had me tired. He outworked the hell out of me. I mean, ran circles, and I'm 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, that's no mm -hmm. shock, but that just goes to show you if he, in the age that Master Farah Muhammad has blessed him to reach, and even to this day, outworking, he said, I outwork every damn one of you. And that's right but I should be doing more out in the community. So while Allah has blessed me to reach the people on social media, my people in the streets have to feel me that much more hard. But all praise is due to Allah for the technology and us being in line with modern times in order to use that which we have, man. Just like you do. Beautiful, all praise is due to Allah. Teaching, brother David, you teach it. And people are continuing to show you love all across the country. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Now, Brother David, what, what was the last um, testimony, the last straw, if you will, that you was like, all right, I'm ready to go 10 toes down this time? Like, like what was the last thing that, that was like God speaking to you, Allah speaking to you? What was it? Believe it or not, that's a good question, man. You always ask them on-point questions. Believe it or not, Brother Joshua, it was a... Uh, 
the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's, I believe it was his last public message on the Ramadan prayer line. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was facing some, some trials that I was undergoing within my personal life and personal struggles that I had fell back into. And by Master Farah Muhammad's permission, I was cleaning myself up. I said, I got to get back on it because Allah's going to kill me. And that's what, hey, man, listen, I can't speak for nobody else, but I know I'm out of here if I don't submit, chief. So I said, David, you better hurry up, man, and, and get it together. And I always had my brother, Gary Mahatmas Muhammad, always warning me, man. Allah always sent him to snatch me up <laughs> and warn me. Mm. But it was the uh, what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, and I advise all the believers, the youth in particular of the Nation of Islam. I'm not gonna tell you what he said. Go back and check it for yourself. I know you're not lazy, so go back and you check it for yourself and listen to what our father said because it touched me in such a way to where as I was, damn, I was being a traitor. Not only to myself though. It's deep and not, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Y'all got to check it out. Ramadan prayer line. It was the uh, the second message that he gave on the Ramadan prayer line. I believe it was the last day of Ramadan. And uh, y'all got to check it out for yourself. It's on YouTube. So y'all check that out. But that's what got me, uh, dear brother. And that's what made me say, you know what, brother? Tighten up, man. Tighten up. Man. Tighten up, man. And, and, be the, and be the example that you know that you are, brother. You see what I'm saying? So... So that got me right, man. And uh, by Allah's permission, I got back on the board and, and, and I'm climbing up the ladder, Brother Joshua, by Allah's permission. And regardless to any trial that comes my way, it, it doesn't matter. Because the believer, especially in this hour, if you haven't already been, which you should have been, but if you're not already, we have to be like Job. No matter what comes against us, Hey, to God be the glory. It's only by your active or permissive will that it's happened. So I'm going to stand firm because no matter the situations or no matter what the enemy brings, no matter if he takes my job, no matter if he takes whatever, if even my own health is affected, will I curse God or will I give God the praise? You know, in the Holy Quran, it says that, you know, we swear by our strongest oaths, man, but we're going to be tested on everything that we say, man. This ain't an hour to where you could just go by saying, yeah, go ahead, minister. Yeah, it's going to go ahead, all right. Going to go ahead and see if you believe. Yes, sir, and time, yes, time, as the most honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan said, is the winner all the time. So time bears witness, brother, who is who. Beautiful, right there. Beautiful. You teach it. And thank everybody who's watching. My sister Naima says, yes, sir. Okay, now, Brother David Ali, okay, we got, I, can, I have a few more questions for you, but the next question I have for you, sir, is while you're in the community, while you're um, at work, wherever you are in public, because you are such an activist, pub, like you are putting your space next to the message. Some people just share the minister. You know, you're post the minister and then post what your thoughts are. And then you're actually showing that you are on the mosque grounds. You're here, you're on, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you took the oath and you standing on it. Do you ever fear? Have you ever faced fear? Hell yeah. so, how, how do you overcome that fear? No, sir. I have not. I cannot say that I have. I'll tell you this emphatically, hell no. But I will tell you this. I feared me not submitting. Mm. I feared where I was in times to where I'm like, this is not what you're supposed to do, brother. I feared coming up to the gate and being turned around. Mm, mm, mm. I you make all these sacrifices and you suffered all these years and then you fall off and then you get right to the gate just to be turned around. It's mm. unacceptable to me. So mm. that's what I fear. I feel being the disappointment to the honorable and a, dis and a misrepresentation to the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. I fear that. I fear that. But in terms of fear of the enemy, brother, absolutely not. Because my spirit has always been, man, come with me, man. Mm, come mm, with me. Mm, and if it take my life, it take my life. But we already know what the Holy Quran says about that. And we already know about the power of Master Farah Muhammad, those who believe. And we already know about the power of the will, those who believe. So, brother, 
who in the hell are we if we truly believe to have fear? Let me ask this question. Is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan afraid? Don't we say we follow him? Is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, when he was 40 miles down doing this particular work that you seen the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan doing, did you see him afraid? Go ahead, go ahead. Or did he say to the hell with you all, I'm going to continue on what Master Farah Muhammad gave me and evaded every single damn one of you agents, hypocrites, and uh, FBI agents. So no, brother, uh, I don't believe not only just me, but I don't believe any true believer is afraid. I don't, I, I'm not convinced. When a man truly has Muhammad in his heart and our savior has arrived, the honorable minister, the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us, you know, Master Farah Muhammad told him, he said, anybody who was a believer essentially would die for this. So I don't believe any true believer is afraid. I don't, I, I'm just not convinced brother. I'm just not convinced. I believe that if you are faithless, that you, that you may be afraid and you may be shaken. Like you hear the Holy Apostle, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan say, oh minister, you, you, you coming down so hard about the, about the Jews and you just teach it. Well, hell, what does that say about you? And your faith and your belief, mm -hmm. you should go check that. And I'm not condemning, but I'm warning, you should check that. And if you don't know God, find it. Because when this enemy makes his more harsher move that's to come, then what? Are you gonna be stifled in fear? Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm not gonna go too far, brother, but yes. Beautiful teaching, excellent. Praise be to a lot. Now, Brother David, we have a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast this month. I wanna thank um, everyone who continues to show love uh, on Cash App, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. People show love all across the country, random, and, and I appreciate that. If you would like to be a sponsor and or donor, please cash out the People's Podcast. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me Children's Book, Coloring Book, and now Spanish Book. All three available on Amazon.com. Please go get those. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country and right here in the studio of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Rock Communications, if you're working on a book and you need project management, content development, or media relations, please reach out to Rock Communications. Fashion Guides, Urban Streetwear, 314-329-006009. Um, reach out to him, he'll keep you dressed, dripped in the best of fashion. Thank you very much. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad, Conflict Mediation, Squashing the Beef Throughout the Southwest Region. He does a phenomenal job. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, giving birth to a God in the science of child rearing. Also, Brother Kenneth, bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship bow ties to you anywhere in the nation. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry's turkey legs right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad of Chicago, COVID-19 disinfecting cleaning services. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdusharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse both of which are available on Amazon, right back to our amazing guest, Brother David Ali. Okay, now, Brother David, my next question for you is, sir, let's go back to the um, 2009 event, Muammar Gaddafi, uh, Colonel mm -hmm. Muammar Gaddafi, and uh, most of this was part of the United Nations. Uh, how, why is it important that we study the history and of, of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi? Well, I would suggest that all the beliefs go back to the uh, October 24th, 1989 uh, press conference that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan did in regards to his experience on the wheel. Mm. Moreover, if you study the words from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you will know, and I didn't even expect to touch on this, but this very second, you will know that uh, Brother Murmar Gaddafi has helped us, the nation of Islam, in regards to his brotherhood and the resources made available to him and has given them to us in the form of a loan to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad, the national representative of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. You would know that if you study the words of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, he said brothers and sisters, he said, 
what's happening in Libya is a small sign of what's to come to the nation of Islam. Again, that's on you to do your own research on that. But that's what I would say, Brother Joshua, in short. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Continue to show love to Brother David. My next question for you, sir, is you often post clips of Mother Sanetta Muhammad. Um, what is it about her and her spirit that connect, that, that you have such a strong connection with? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was always drawn to Mother Tynetta Muhammad. I cannot say that I always understood Mother Tynetta, especially when I first joined the Nation of Islam. Mm. But she was always a very, uh, her love, I would say. Mm. Mm. Her loving spirit. See, at that time, brother, I didn't understand. I, I wasn't so much in depth with her spiritually. Okay. But when I used to see her at Mosque Marianne, and she used to address the believers in rare occasions, the love, mm, mm. the loving vibration mm. emanating from her being. I said, damn, I said, you know, who is, who is this woman? Who is she? And um, I tell you, brother, when she would speak, and this ain't nothing spooky, and for those who are in tune, understand just like the father, but in a feminine, different way. She would literally change the atmosphere. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And um, so in 2007, which was my, which was me being a year in the nation, I started studying some of her articles. And then fast forward to 2013, I really started studying her, on, uh, her articles mm -hmm. in the final call newspaper, which led me to uh, get into the study of crystals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I want you all to go and research what not only Mother Tynetta shared, but I will use her as the main focal point. Study what Mother Tanetta shared that Master Farad Muhammad shared in regards to the crystalline energy or uh, properties. What the most honorable Elijah Muhammad shared and that which Mother has to offer to us mm -hmm. in the way of crystal technology. Mm -hmm. So I would uh, cajole you to do so. And don't think weird of brothers like me or the likes of those in the nation of Islam who have such technology. Because when you come into the knowledge of it, which is the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, it would then be dangerous for you to have such a opposing stance towards it if you are in fact a believer. Beautiful, beautiful, all praises to Allah. Yes, sir. My next question for you, sir, is um, last time you didn't get to rap for us or anything like that, but you uh, posted a song that you did with the legendary group that I, that I was a big fan of growing up, uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. How did that? How did that come about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, 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 well, I've knew the brother quite a long time, and um, they always been good brothers. Uh, me and Busy, we was real close. Me and Lazy uh, Bone became close over the years, and it was just one of those things that was uh, bound to happen. And by Allah's grace. Uh, me and the brothers, we, we finally got the song done. And uh, we actually recorded that before COVID, but the message of it, it was something how the message of it bore witness to the time in which we're now living in on a greater scale than when we wrote the, uh, the, the song. Mm. So all praises due to Allah, the name of the song is called Enemies. And uh, though I'm more into my studies right now, um, when my spirit calls for it, we're going to drop a video to it and maybe do another song, but I'm not sure. But we're definitely going to drop a video to it because it's a representation of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And by Allah's permission, I've received so much love from a lot of Caucasian people, mm -hmm. to my surprise, mm -hmm. that, and I could see deeper how music reaches the masses. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And Brother Joshua, man, when you put truth in it, it's like it overcomes the barrier that you had in your mind. Because when you play the song, the first thing you hear is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. Then Lazy, then myself spitting the teachings in the way I do. So I say all praises due to Allah, man. 
And may Allah bless all the artists in the nation of Islam that are, that are doing everything that you all are doing because you all are amazing. And it takes a brilliant mind in order to put that on paper and to recite it in the way that you do in order to reach the masses of the people that otherwise probably wouldn't be reached. Mm, mm. You teach it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so um, besides Bone Thugs and Harmony, can you give us your favorite album of all time? Ooh, album, Brother Joshua? Yes, sir. Man, brother. Okay. Tupac. All eyes on me. Okay, you can't go wrong with all eyes on me. You can't go wrong with all eyes on me. Yes, sir. All the Tupac <laughs> albums, but you got me on that one. But all eyes on me. All eyes on me, definitely. Yeah. Beautiful. Praise be to our yes, sir. That's 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 an off uh repeated classic album. When I ask people their favorite album of all time, you're gonna get some Tupac all eyes on me for sure. Got a lot of <laughs> Well, you got a lot of albums. Eminem show, uh, Welcome to Nellyville, Bad Wow's album on your uh chart. You got uh uh, uh the Carter, you got Queen, you got Kanye's album, you got Michael Jackson off the wall. That's dope, man. I see you. Oh, praise be to uh, yes, sir. Uh, if hopefully you can send me one with Bone Thanks and Harmony, you can give me the uh Creeping on the Come Up or that East 99. Or you know what I'm saying? If you want to ever, you know what I'm saying, send me one of those. Come on, uh, for sure. I'll, I'll make it, I'll post it up. Most um, my next question for you, sir, is how important is the reality of, because I have a whole new series that I'm posting now uh, on a playlist for everybody who's watching people's podcast that deals with just the will and believer's testimony of the will. So uh, how important is that in this in 2022? How important is that we have a proper understanding of the will? Mm, I would say that it's essential that uh that you have a proper understanding, a thorough understanding of that which Master Farad Muhammad gave the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, that he taught and embedded and imprinted in the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. I will go as far, me personally, I will go as far as saying, it's one of our fundamental or foundational points in our teaching of the nation of Islam. It is essential. In fact about it, I don't believe that you could be a true believer and dismiss it. Because how then would you explain the experience that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has unless you deem him a liar? How then could you explain what Master Farad Muhammad is and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? unless you deem them liars. So I always say, brother, that it is essential for every single believer and all black people, the truth about it, to study what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said about the baby planes and the mother plane. It is essential. I have listened to other believers' experiences on the wheel. I haven't had an experience on the wheel. I had an experience on the baby plane though. Mm. So it's real. It's as real as I'm sitting here, me and brother Joshua having this uh, this interview. It's real. And the reality of it, as the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said, you all could make mockery, but before you can get that out, you're going to see them all over your major cities. And I'll be darned if that hasn't happened, but wait, it's going to happen at an even more increasing rate. To mm -hmm. even those that reject that which they know they see, it's going to be so abundant to where it's either there, even they'll have to shut their mouths and bow down. And that's just the end of it, man. Oh, praise you to a lot. Yes, sir. Would you like to go more in depth with your experience with the baby plan? I can. I will be short as I possibly can, Brother Joshua. Yes, sir. It was in the year 2009. I was in a city called Crete, Illinois. At this particular time, this was my about third year in the nation of Islam as a registered member. I believe I was 19 years old. I cannot tell you all that I was living what we call the exemplary life of a Muslim and that I was not submitting to the restrictive law of Islam 100%. 
So when I had this experience, which is not the first experience I had, the first experience I had was with the most honorable Elijah Muhammad I seen. But since we're talking about the will, let's stay focused. Okay. I was not living the best exemplary life. So it shocked me that I even had this experience on the baby plane. I'll get right to it. I was taken upon the baby plane. And when I was on the baby plane, I was seated by a pilot, but it was a steel panel blocking my view. So I could not see the pilot, dear brother Joshua, but I felt his presence. And I wanna say that the presence on the baby plane is not like it is down here. It's a very serious vibration, meaning this, there are no games played. It ain't no joking, it ain't no he he ha ha. It's very serious and it's very mission-minded. They don't play no games whatsoever. I have to say that. But it was a very peaceful atmosphere. It was a very clean, pristinely clean atmosphere. And I looked out the window, Brother Joshua, and all I seen was the cosmos like stars, but we were going at such a fast rate. If any of you ever travel in a Mercedes Benz or a high luxury vehicle, do you know how like, how smooth that ride is if you're going at a fast rate. Imagine you're going even at a faster rate. Brother, it, I don't know how fast it was. It was beyond 3,000 miles per hour. I'm not saying it clocked at 25,000. I'm not saying it clocked at 9,000. It was at least 3,000 or better though, dear brother Joshua. And all I could see was the, the I looked out, it was like, a, it wasn't a big window, but it was like that shape. It was like this shape. And I looked out of it and all I could see was like, the cosmic, just the stars, but it was so beautiful, Brother Joshua. It was the most amazing thing I've ever witnessed in my entire life. And upon me, and I listen, nothing, I want to say this too. It was no verbal talking. Everything is telepathic. There's nothing, it was no verbal speaking whatsoever. It was all telepathic. I cannot tell you what happened to me on the uh, baby plane. That was a race from my memory. When I came back to my body, I woke up and I couldn't move. It was like I was being held down by a force. And when I tried to scream for help to somebody to come in the room, to, cause I was scared brother Joshua, I'm not gonna sit up here and lie. Yes, I believe in the truth, but brother, it got real cheap. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yes, so I couldn't move my body and I was trying to scream for help. But as I was trying to scream for help, nothing could come out of my mouth. It was like my vocals was silenced. I know what that now means, which I, I'm not going to get into it here, but I, I, I understand. And um, I phased back out and it was just like, a, like, a, like you phase out. And uh, I remember waking up that morning and I was like, oh, Allah. And uh, I'll never, I'll never forget it so long as I live. And that was the last time that uh, Master Farah Muhammad permitted me on the baby plane. And that was a year 2009 in Crete, Illinois. Beautiful. Well, yes. Thank you so much. yes, sir. Yes, sir. And people are showing you love all across the country. And I can't wait to put this on YouTube. And thank you for your transparency thank and, you. your, and your telling of the story, sir. Now, when, OK, so and, and of course, you know, being from Naperville, I'm familiar with Crete. And I know about Crete Monique High School and all of that. Okay. All things okay. nature. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, what about you? Were you nervous about telling people the story? No, no, sir. No, sir. Any, uh, I have documented Master Farah Muhammad uh, in the last, especially last year. As you know, the uh, enemy shut down uh, my Instagram. I created a new one. But I had all my experience, experiences documented on video because I've made posts over the years on Facebook, which I no longer have a Facebook account. I, I, uh, I am off Facebook currently. Uh, but I have made videos of every experience, most experiences, excuse me, that I could share. I have made videos of them because Master Farad Muhammad pressed me to. And uh, I wanted the believers to know, especially in this time, because it was time and it is time for them to know. Many believers have experiences, dear brother, but they're so afraid about, oh, this one's gonna view me as that, and this one's gonna view, you shouldn't be afraid. They should be afraid. They're the ones that need to be afraid. 
So I'll leave it at that because I feel my spirit is going to get very fiery in that regard. But they are the ones that need to be afraid. You all that Master Farad Muhammad has blessed to have these experiences. If he blessed you to have the, these experiences and it comes from the Lord of the worlds, it comes from the Supreme Being, is your experience then crazy? You're subconsciously calling God crazy. And I submit that to you respectfully. So no, brother, emphatically no. I've never had any fear about me telling the believers I traveled to Mars or I seen the most honorable Elijah Muhammad or I had this experience with the baby plane. There's other experiences I had not on the physical baby plane, but they would literally, literally in real time come right in front of me at nighttime over the, when I was at uh, August, 30, I believe it was August 30th or August 31st, 2019, 2.30 a.m. And they telepathically communicated with me. They said, we are ready to, meaning that we're ready to do what we have to do, but it was telling us to get our affairs together as the black man and woman here in the, here in the hills of North America. Brother, the Caucasian is absolutely done for. But not to deviate from the point, I've shared many experiences and not one single experience have I ever been afraid of. I have such conviction, brother, because I know it didn't come from me, it came from him. And so why in the hell would I walk fearful when it comes from him? No, sir. Just as I'm not fearful sharing the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, those experiences are the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you should share your experiences. You should. Don't ever be afraid of what Master Farah Muhammad has blessed you to receive. Don't ever do that because you're, 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 you're hiding your light. And there's others, beloved, that, 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 that need to hear that. Just like I don't hide about my failures or my trials. I'm one of the most transparent brothers that you will speak to. I don't fear being rejected. I don't fear being looked at all. Oh, he, ugh. You could say whatever you want to, but I do bear witness that Master Farad Muhammad is the best knower of my heart. So it doesn't mean a hill of beans, as my father would say, about what you think. What does Master Farad Muhammad think? And if I'm in trouble with him, then I'm surely in trouble. But if I'm in trouble with you, who are you? You ain't him. You ain't the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and you damn sure ain't the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. Beautiful teacher, brother David. Beautiful teacher. Yes, sir. And people are showing you love all across the country, by the way. Thank you all. And we can't wait to love this on YouTube. Uh, but David, now I want to ask you this question. This is a question I asked all of the guests for the last time. The Wi-Fi was messed up on part one, which really upset me because that was good too. But I still kept it up because you can't re you can't, you know, rechange that <laughs> history. So we want to keep it for the best of you know what we yes, got from that. But what would you like your legacy to be, brother David? The same as I am last time which is I just want to be a good Muslim. I want to be a good brother. That is all. I just want to be a good Muslim and a good brother and to lead by example and not by the words that come out my mouth, but the actions demonstrated therefore. I just want to be a good Muslim and a good brother. And the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan teaches, as I have shared last time, that brother is the best or high highest title that you can give. All these other titles, okay, all right, all right. But me, I just want to be a good brother to you. And if I got it, you got it. And if I could give a word that will help you, all praise is due to Allah. And anything that comes from me of good is from the nation of Islam, under the God of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and his angel, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I just want to be a good brother, bro. All that other stuff is irrelevant to me personally. Beautiful, all praise due to a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And people are showing you love all across the country. Now I got one more question, brother David, because you said yes, I can't anything. For somebody who's looking to get married, and you, I mean, bro, you just deep. You got the knowledge and everything. Is it the? Are you looking for someone who can can deal with you on that level, or are you looking for <laughs> the opposite, somebody to balance you out to be more silly and playful, or are you looking for somebody who they got they got to match your your level of intensity with the teachers of Muslim Elijah Muhammad? All of that, mm. all of that. But I would say this. To 
study everything that the most honorable minister Louis Farrakhan said in regards to marriage before you make that step as I am studying. Mm -hmm. Cause I don't want any of you to think that I am just, no, I have learned many lessons. Brother David has made many, many mistakes. So brother David has been chastised by master for Muhammad had to sit down and redo this thing the right way. Mm -hmm. And as a result of doing it the right way, as taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you can't go wrong. Man. So, yes, brother, brother David is looking for all of that. But see, brother David can't ask for something that he himself is not. So brother David is striving to perfect himself. So that way there is no excuse for me not to have the like of that which I seek. Mm -hmm. You see? I understand. Yes, sir. You teach it, brother David. You teach it. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I'm on the same thing. I'm on the same thing. Hey, Josh, come on now. Yes, sir. All praise due to a lot. People showing you love all across the country. Thank everyone who continues to watch. This has been an, a very enlightened and um, high tone scale conversation. And this oh, is what man. our people need. This is what the people need across the country. This is why I do the People's Podcast. Um, wow. All right. I don't know what that person's saying. But yes, sir. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off of the People's Podcast. Thank you again, Brother David, and may Allah continue to bless you and your family, sir. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum, thank you, Joshua. Thank you, sir. Right.